I founded Mineral Policy Center because there needed to be a group that worked specifically on environmental problems for mineral development. And I've been working mostly with oil and gas, actually, and not hard rock. But there needed to be a focus group. When we started, we were working on oil and gas leasing issues on public lands. I had gotten involved with leasing threats in the immediate vicinity of Yellowstone National Park and Jackson Hole, and some craziness about the way oil and gas leases were being issued without really thinking about what the environmental consequences would be if companies went ahead and developed them. A newspaper writer once said, don't all environmentalists have to face the idea that everything they care about is eventually going to go away, which is pretty chilling. And I said, that may or may not be, but my life now is much better in the Jackson Hole Yellowstone area because of the work of people that I know or can name. Some of them I knew personally. And I think it was an, an inspiration to pick that up and move ahead. That Mineral Policy Center would be, would have a close, trusting, honest, respectful relationship with local communities and groups was one that was just, I wanted to build that into the culture of the organization and I think I did and I think it still is. And I think it's been carried forward in a, in a wonderful way. Um, there's always a tension between local groups and Washington-based groups. We got told, and it made me feel very good, by a number of, of local groups that of all the D.C. groups they dealt with, Mineral Policy Center was the one they felt they could trust. Part of the concept was that we would be an environmental advocacy organization. We would be working with citizens groups, but we would also be credible as an objective, very well informed voice on the Hill. So that when we testified at a hearing, we could not be dismissed as those fruitcakes who want to stop all mining. And uh, we knew that that was not going to be something that could succeed. And again, I wanted to pick goals that we could win. So we carefully positioned ourselves to be, frankly, an outfit that could have been an industry outfit, except we had a different viewpoint. And in fact, there was some grumbling in the mining industry when we sent out our first mailer, the first issue of Clementine, the magazine that we used. And I put 1,500 mining industry names on the mailing list for that because I wanted them to know that they had a problem and it wasn't a problem that they could dismiss. It wasn't a problem that they could brush off and say they're the fruitcakes who want to stop all mining. We were going to be people who could talk about how mining could be done in a way that was environmentally responsible, but why it wasn't being done that way now.